Hey guys, it's Eddie the Magic Monk. Today I'm going to show you guys how to delete records in a MySQL database uh, via a web page, a PHP page, but using JavaScript to determine which record to delete. So you might think, well, that sounds like a lot of stuff in one sentence, but trust me guys, after you go through this, you will fully understand what's going on. So the first thing I'm going to do is set up my web server with the database that I'm going to show you how to delete the record for. So the web server I'm using is the XAMPP uh, web server. So if you don't have that already, just download it from this website. You can just Google exam and this website will show up Apache uh, friend.org slash index.html. So go to this page, download XAMPP. Once you have downloaded it, install it onto a particular folder on your computer. In my case, it's under D drive slash XAMPP. So all these files came from this installer. And the next thing I'm going to do is run this XAMPP hyphen control dot exe. And by running that, I can then start my own web server on my computer. So I'm going to click start on the first two lines. And this will start my web server as well as my database, my SQL database. So once you have started the database, you're going to click on admin next to the MySQL row. And this will open up the PHP MyAdmin database and you're going to click on show panel here and you can see these are all the databases that are created by default and i want to work on the test database which has no tables in it so just to keep it consistent i'm going to give you guys the code for creating a table so let's go to sql and the code that i'm giving you guys is on my website so to get the code, you can simply type into your browser magicmonktutorials.com slash php slash delete dot txt and it'll bring up this page. And what I want to do is copy the code for creating the table, which goes from create table students all the way down to this finishing bracket here, control C. Control V into this SQL text box. And this is simply the code for creating a student's table with four columns where student ID is the primary key. So simply click go and it'll run this query. And then if you click on structure, you can see there is now a student's table. And if you click on the table, it'll have no records in it, which is normal. So now we're going to insert some records. So to insert records, again, I have provided to you guys the code for it. So simply copy this code and I'm going to run another query here, paste the query in, and this simply inserts into the students table these records, which you will see in a second. So let's click on go. And then if you go to browse, you'll see these are the records. I have six students. These are their first names. These are their last names and their emails. Everyone has a student ID. Now, these names and emails should be completely fake. If you know someone with these names, then it's a complete coincidence. OK, so next thing I want to do is show you the instructions on how to delete a record. So let's click on SQL and let's simply click on delete. And this is the code for deleting a record. Delete from the students table where? What is the condition? The condition is I want the student ID. So I noticed I just double click on student ID and it came up here. Student ID equals one. OK, so that is the SQL query for deleting the table. So if I click go and click OK, 
you can see when I click browse, the number one student is gone because I deleted it. Okay, so now what we're going to do is make it delete this record or one of the records from a PHP page. So in order to do that, I'm going to go to the folder where I can run a web page on my server. So back to the XAMPP folder, I'm going to go into htdocs. And this is where you can run uh, a file and it'll show up on your web server. So I'm going to delete uh, some of the files that I've used earlier. So yours should look exactly like this. I'm going to create a new file. So right click new text document. I'm going to create a file called delete.php. And then I'm going to edit this file in Notepad++. Okay, and you can see this file is currently blank. So I'm just going to type something here. I'm just going to type test, save. And then I'm going to run this file. So back in my uh, control panel for exam, click on admin in front of the uh, Apache module. So click admin here. And you can see it brings up this local host address and instead of dashboard I'm just going to delete that and I'm going to put in delete.php here and you can see it says test so it's fully working so I'm just going to stick that here and I'm going to get rid of this uh, exam website so now what I'm going to do is edit the code so that rather than just saying test I want it to connect to my database. So the code for that is again over here on the source code that I've provided to you guys. And I'm simply going to copy these lines here and paste it here. And this is simply the PHP code for connecting to my database. And you can see here that the server name is localhost because the database servers on my computer. These are just the default username and password. Because I have not set a password, uh, the password is blank. The database name is tests. And this will create a new connection variable to the database. If there is an error, then it'll show this error message and so on. And to finish off, I'm just going to put in question mark. Uh, angular bracket and this will finish off the page. So if you save that, refresh on this page, it says connected successfully. If it does not say connected successfully, you cannot move on. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is use PHP to delete a record. And you can see the code over here. So I'm going to copy this single line copy and put that under connected successfully. This is the code for deleting from the students table. Now I have not yet explained what this last bit means. So I'm going to delete everything after the equal sign. And I'm going to put in student ID equals two. And quotation mark and semicolon. So what this means is that it'll delete from the students table where the student ID is equal to two. So let's look at that inside our table. And you can see under our test table inside students, number two is John Snow. So after I run this page, right, the number two student should be gone. Okay, so but before we run it, we need to copy and paste the code for uh, running the query. So let's copy and paste this. Okay, so we're going to run the query. And if it is run successfully, it'll say record deleted successfully. And I'm also going to copy the code here for closing the connection. Now notice each 
brace has a closing brace. So I'm only copying up to here. I'm not copying this extra brace because that's used for something else, which I'll explain later. So this will this should run and the second student should be deleted. So let's try that. Let's refresh this. Record deleted successfully and let's check our database. Now, if I refresh this, you'll see the second student will be gone. Second student is now gone. We only have three, four, five, six. Okay, so now we have done most of the work. The next thing we want to do is try and make it so that we get the user to import which student they want to delete. So to start off, I'm going to create a button. Okay, and I'm also going to disable the code for running the SQL query for deleting for now. All right, I'm going to comment that out so it doesn't try to delete anything. So this button here will say try it. And if I save that and I run it, it says try it. But if I click on that, nothing will happen because it is calling a function called my function. But I have not defined what that means. So I'm going to copy and paste that code, which is the script section. So this section of code simply says when the my function function is executed, it'll ask the user to enter which row they want to delete. And it's going to say variable row equals, please enter which row to delete. Okay, and um, document equals get element. So I'm not going to do all. Uh, so this part, which I'll explain actually, this part just means I'm going to find somewhere on this document with an ID called demo. So I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to copy and paste this line and put it here. So there's a paragraph with an ID called demo. So it's going to retrieve that element and it's going to change what is inside that element. It's going to assign it to the variable row. So what's inside row? Row is going to be the input from the user. So let's do that. Let's save this. Refresh the page. And if I click try it, it'll say, please enter which row to delete. And if I put a number, Let's say three, three will simply show up here, but it will not have deleted anything. Okay, so to actually make it delete, we need to go back. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this line now. So what does this line do? This line will simply refresh the page. So it'll put this section of stuff onto the address bar. So it's going to go to window. It's going to change the location. So this bit of address here, it's going to set it to delete.php question mark row equals. So what that means is I'm just going to show you. So if I refresh the page, I click try it. I put a number in. It'll put inside the address bar question mark row equals six. Right, that's what this bit means. Delete dot PHP question mark row equals plus row. Row is simply the input from the user which is stored in the row variable. So what's the point in putting that here? This is the bit where we can pass the number six onto PHP. So inside PHP code, I'm now going to put in this bit of if statement. So I'm going to put that underneath connected successfully. I'm going to get rid of the comment code and I'm going to put here. If there is a row argument inside the address, inside the address, if this row equals six exists, then I'm going to 
create a PHP variable called row and I'm going to indent all of this code by pressing tab so it matches the indenting so it's going to retrieve this row number which is 6 and it's going to attach that to my SQL statement so I can now simply just copy this line and replace it so what it's doing is it's getting this variable and attaching it to the end of my SQL code so whatever the user enters it'll be part of the SQL okay so if I now save this refresh the page okay now notice I'm gonna get rid of all that and just press enter first uh, line 41 there is a problem why is there a problem oh because I did not finish the brace so this brace does not have a closing brace so make sure you do that refresh okay so if I click try it enter which row to delete and let's say I want to delete record number five press OK okay so now let's have a look at my page refresh this page number five is gone so that has shown that my code is working okay so the last thing I want to say is that this way of attaching a variable to the SQL code will pose a security risk all right because what the person can do and I will explain more in the next tutorial is that they can click try it they can put some something to do with SQL here and that's going to alter the SQL code you're sending to the server and potentially ex extract uh, secret information from your database so you don't want to do it this way so next tutorial I'm going to show you how to make this way more secure okay thanks for watching guys see you next time See you next time.